All right, back for year five of my wee uh, firewood trial here in Marlborough. Um, so all these trees and this little block on the end here, all five years in the ground now. It's now midwinter in New Zealand, so beautiful clear day, no wind. Um, these trees have had another hard summer. As usual, it's been droughty, windy and hot. Um, you wouldn't know it looking at the ground today because it's wet and green and hardly any wind but uh, you won't get conditions like this in summer so a lot of these really struggle so I've found out what are the good what what can handle drought and what can't um, and the temperatures here probably get down to about we wouldn't ever get lower than minus four and probably not even that um, so yeah, we'll go down the row and have a look. Just here next to me we've got a couple of um, leucoxal in here. And you might be able to see in the top of that it's just about finished flowering, but there's some um, nice um, dark pinkish flowers at the top there. So these are doing well. They don't they seem pretty tough in the conditions here, obviously you don't need much water. And strangely, I've seen this on the leucoxal and I've got it home in pots as well. They're all putting out new growth for some reason, even though it's the middle of winter, you can see there's quite a lot of um, new growth. I don't know why on earth they're growing in midwinter, but they are. And that one's just finished flowering. This is a sibling to that one. And it's got quite creamy flowers and it's still flowering. The bees are busy in there. So yeah, they're doing really well. Right in front of me, this is polyanthemos. Um, these have never really done anything. That one's, well, five years old and it's lucky to be two metres. It's obviously not much good for here. Behind it, that's Globulus uh, subspecies Bicostata. So that's done really well. That's quite a big tree now. And that's already flowered. Um, you probably can't see in the video, but it's got seed capsules all over it and it's got buds. So it's obviously going to flower again this coming year. And it's Got a decent sized trunk on it now, so that'll be almost 20 centimetres across at the bottom. So I had a few losses through here um, with the dry, so I've just replanted with Pinus radiata. Uh, they're impossible to kill, so I just put them in the ground and they don't need any care. Um, a lot of quite stunted trees down this end where it's dry, so these are Ovata. But yeah, not doing particularly well here in this dry end. Other holes I've replaced with Lusitanica and alive, but not, not exactly thriving. This right in front of me is a Cordata eucalyptus, and that's a reasonable size and form. Um, but they have defoliated quite a lot in the drought, but still alive. And not, not too bad. Moving along. Got quite a few runty type ovata here. I'm not sure whether that's genetic or environmental. But, um, I'll probably cut them out. There's another one there that's quite spindly and obviously didn't like the drought. There's a cordata in front of that that's lost a lot of its foliage through drought. And another gap there. More gaps here. There's one of the nightens here that's survived. It's one of the few that's actually survived the dry. Um, it's not exactly huge, but it's alive. A lot of the nightens that I had down this end of dead. Um, yeah, I don't know if they're really a dry climate tree. Um, here in front of me, these are all Ovata again. A lot of new growth on these, I don't know how or why they're growing in midwinter, but they are. Um, moving along. The dead ones here. These are um, Fraxinoides. These haven't really done very well here. There's another runty one behind it. A decent size Ovata there. They've been a bit of a mixed bag, but the best of them are quite good trees. Um, 
these two here are oblique. These, well, especially this one nearest me, is now an extremely large tree and flowering. It's covered in buds um, and very, very healthy. So that would be one of my picks for this climate. And that's a decent size now and very straight. And that's probably be 20 centimeters across at the base. Um, it's another that's grown very well and very healthy, this is Glaucusens. Um, and that there would be, well, that would be over. Let me take a measure here. So, yeah, that'd be a good 20 centimeters at the base. So, pretty decent growth rate. It's just a shame I only planted one of them originally. So, I don't know whether that's just a freak or whether it's environmental. I've planted a couple more seedlings this year to see how they go. I'm obviously pretty happy with the conditions. Um, through here, I've got a few Viminalis that are spindly and been a bit of a waste of time. And they get pretty badly attacked by insects. So I don't think I'll bother with them anymore. A couple more cordata that are probably average. So it's a bit dark in here. Moving along. In this far corner there's a there was no vata, I've just cut up the firewood. I had to cut it down because it's right in this awkward spot in the corner next to the vineyard, so I didn't want it getting too big to the point where I couldn't cut it down without destroying the vineyard. Um, but that's been quite large um, before I cut it down. Um, probably grown a lot stronger than the other trees here. It's probably been able to get into the irrigation of the grapes next door. Um, those growth rings, those on either side of my finger there, they'd be Probably two and a half centimetres or an inch apart, so that's probably close to five centimetres a year that's put on. So a bit of water they can do pretty amazing growth. Move on and have a look at the four-year-olds. So yeah. just get the sun behind me. Couple of pinus radiata there that are five years old, so I've just pruned those up a bit. The firewood, otherwise, they'll retain their lower branches. Not like the eucalypts that shed their branches better. Those are nice and healthy, not such great firewood, but good kindling wood. And uh, they'd be close to as tall as the biggest of the eucalypts, but not quite. Um, over in this corner, obviously good conditions in this corner because there's quite a lot of trees getting quite dense in here. There's um, Lusitanica that are getting quite large. Another good oblique there. Um, some of the globulus I've planted in here are now quite large. This one's four years old. And that's quite a big healthy tree now. It's four years old. Nightens there that are quite big. It's getting quite bushy in here now. So there's a Viminalis here that's from a different seed. Um, that one's got really large compared to the others, and that's only three years old, so again, I'm not sure whether that's environmental or whether it's genetic, but that one's done far better than the others I've got. Um, another oblique there that's considerably larger than all the other trees around it. And very, very healthy looking. So 
So again, I think that'd be a good choice for this climate. Um, behind that, on the left, just here, this is a Carimbia. Now I planted a mixture of Maculata and Picofolia, so I'm not sure which is which, but I think given the size that these are getting, they could be Maculata, so I'll have to wait till they flower to see, but um, pretty healthy. A largish um, globulus there on the left, that's almost as big as that obliqua on the right. Had pretty good survival with all the globulus. All the ones I planted are still alive, hadn't had any die in the drought. So a lot more drought tolerant than uh, a lot of the other trees. Just the forms, not so great, you can see that one's branching up the top, or forked. Pinus pioneer there, pine nut, it's about a metre tall after four years, so just experimenting with those. But yeah, obviously extremely slow growing. Um, another globular spike starter there, it's quite big compared to all its neighbours. A few odds and sods down the end here, this is a um, polchella, a peppermint. Uh, very narrow foliage, more an ornamental, but um, it's looking quite healthy despite only being small. It's probably only a metre and a half, but looking quite healthy. Uh, we're into three year olds now, so this row is a bit of a mixed bag. We've got down this end, which is very dry, we've got uh, I think that's Gunny Eye nearest me there. Ovata that's not particularly big, Lucitanica, another Ovata, these are not very big. Then we're into some globulus that are getting quite large. Um, and yeah, I think you're getting a bit of genetic variation here, there's a globulus there that's quite stunted. And then behind it, there's a three year old one that's really big. Behind that. Same age, Lucitanica, Ovata, not very big. And behind that, another globulus that's huge for three years. Then we're into a couple of rows of poplars. And I'm not sure what uh, cultivar these are, but they haven't done particularly well. Alright. So it's four year olds, now we're into the three year olds. So. Nothing here is doing particularly well. Planted a lot of Viminalis again from a different seed source. Some of them are doing alright, some not. That one's probably four metres. Um, really been chewed up. So there's quite a few of them along this row, but uh, none of them are doing particularly well. So I don't think I'll plant them again. Um, Got some other bits in here I'm trying. This is a Angophora castata. Um, these are quite uh, ornamental with a nice red smooth bark. I've um, only seen them growing in one place in New Zealand, in Nelson, next to the sea. That's where I get the seeds from these, so seems to be surviving the cold alright. Not growing particularly fast, but looks healthy. Globulus there, it's a bit stunted, probably from the dry. The clade of calyx, these are three years old and that's about my knee height, so that being a complete waste of time. I don't know whether that's the environment or the seeds, or whether they're just slow. Maybe not warm enough for them here. The Carimbia here, that one's Maculata. Not particularly fast growing, but still alive, despite being supposedly very frost tender, but they do, do get good frosts out here, and that's still alive and kicking. And 
still three year olds along here. Nevada on the left, Knighton's on the right. Got some Bazistoana here. These are supposed to have good timber, good durable timber. Um, another one there. Haven't grown particularly fast, quite small leaves. So, not particularly good form either. Quite branchy. That's another Angophora there, that one's been obviously cut down by frost and regrown. Um, decent sized globulus there. Up here we've got a couple of, um, that right in front of me is an obliqua and uh, you can see on the left in the background there's another obliqua so again higher than all their neighbours and um, good form quite healthy looking. So again, would have been better off just planting all in obliqua. But uh, that's what the experiment's all about. It's down the back here. I think this is, I'm not sure what that is, Camelgelensis maybe. Hasn't ever done particularly well. And then finally into some two-year-olds. Um, mainly just planted radiata in here. A mix of firewood and Christmas trees, so yeah, they're hard to kill, so they're all doing fine. I find the odd eucalypt down here, there's Nevada struggling away there, and Obliqua there, doing not too bad. And a couple of loose tanica, doing alright, but they don't grow particularly fast compared to the best of the eucalypts. So there you have it, that's year five, so I'll report back in another year.